my name is Rani Nibo and I'm the founder of the Young Africa Vision. Now, welcome to episode 11 of Young Africa Today. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about how to break your habit of entertainment slavery. This is, this is a very interesting uh, form of slavery. And I believe it's something, again, uh, God has created amazing internet he has cre created amazing ideas of video games and all kinds of beautiful things that we can use uh, in order to develop skills that will bring us into the digital economy with, you know, almost uh, automatically or instinctively um, as young children are learning how to use this technology through gaming. Brilliant. Uh, but the problem is that, again, um, something good can be turned through our human lack of discipline, and the devil of course loves this, into a self-destructive habit. Now, I'm going to ask you to be honest with me, be honest with me. Do you spend most of your waking time, unless you are in school, or unless you are at work, in front of a screen? Do you do that? If you do that, and that can, screen can be your cell phone, it can be your tablet, it can be your computer, it can be your TV. Doesn't matter, it's a screen. And that screen is giving you a lot of entertainment. There have been other forms of entertainment in the past that people could get addicted to. Yes, in the past you will hear of people who would go to the movies in order to escape reality. And they would spend most of their childhood sitting in a movie theatre because reality was hard for them to deal with and they didn't know about Jesus and they didn't know about another coping mechanisms if things were tough at home. But nowadays we are all sitting <laughs> with another home entertainment center in our hands and that is a, a device, a, a cell phone or a tablet or a computer laptop or a computer or a TV. And we are letting someone else direct our thinking the whole time, the whole time. And we don't even notice it, that we are busy wasting our life. And then we wonder where the money went. I'm going to ask you to just do a short little exercise and just write down how many hours a day are you spending in front of your, or looking at your device. And I can tell you that uh, I am not innocent of this entertainment slavery. It has been different and changing from time to time, but even last year, I was going through a lot of emotional strain. And as a result of that, yes, I did pray. Yes, I did fast. Yes, I did read the Bible. But somehow, something in a, in a, in a, on a very human level, I allowed myself to be drawn into clinging and hanging on to this emo emotional um, situation that I was de having to deal with. <laughs> and so, um, and so, a way of, you know, a way for me to cope with this emotional situation was to escape into Netflix. And so, I mean, there were a lot of things going on in my life last year that were extremely stressful, extremely stressful, um, business-wise, uh, personal, you know, my personal life, very, very stressful things that were going on. And Netflix was a great escape. And so I spent a lot of time allowing myself to go into a habit of entertainment slavery in the evenings at home alone and watching one Netflix series after the next. Now, I know that all of us have done this or many of us have done this. But fortunately, you know, at some point I switched over to YouTube videos. I was watching YouTube videos that were more inform informative because I got a little bored with the, you know, with the, with, the, with the stories, watching other people making money. And so um, God actually was so gentle and he, he made me become aware of one very particular uh, YouTube video of two people who believe in Jesus Christ talking to one another and this triggered a whole sequence of events just at the right time when I was feeling extremely um, miserable because I had actually allowed myself to fall into the trap of entertainment slavery so 
even me at the age of 56 can fall into the habit of entertainment slavery. This is not just a child. This is not just a teenager. This is not just someone in the 20s that's addicted to gaming or in the 30s that still is addicted to gaming, you know, since they were a teenager or a child. Um, this is a grown-up woman who actually knows God, loves God. And so we have to be extremely careful as human beings that we don't let the devil take the gap and pull us through a habit into into something that's going to remove us from Christ ultimately and that's going to actually make us, prevent us from fulfilling our potential. And so I specifically added the word habit in the heading of this um, particular form of entertainment slavery. Again, if we are going to be looking at, um, at the Mandala model, I allowed myself last year, and I want you to be honest, is this something that you are doing? To let entertainment start forming the center of my, of my life, instead of putting Christ at the center of my life. Fortunately, <laughs> I didn't put Christ too far off the center, and so it was possible for the Holy Spirit to inspire me through, in a very sweet way, through a YouTube uh, video, to just, you know, wake up, wake up and start understanding that my joy is in the Lord. My joy is in the Lord and that I mustn't let an outside situation and this emotional situation I was going through was really, um, was really my own personal pain I had to deal with and I wasn't keen to deal with it. <laughs> I wasn't keen to deal with it. I wanted it to go away on its own and I wanted, you know, I was clinging, clinging to that pain. Um, and so I was very, very Happy to know that God doesn't, you know, he will, he will allow us to be human, just human, for a, for a while. But he will never, if we have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God will never let us run too far off the right track before he finds a way of pulling us back close to him. And, um, and so I had actually wanted to start this Young Africa channel last year already. But somehow the devil was using my, um, my own um, failure of being able to understand that I'd fallen into a habit of entertainment slavery as a way of stopping me from starting to make these videos. There was always a reason why I wouldn't do it on that day because I was too tired or I was too sad or there was too much other stress or I didn't... Uh, feel confident enough about the way I looked like or whatever. There was always an excuse. And then with this video that I saw between Christmas and New Year, it was as if God had just said, wake up, you're missing your purpose. Your purpose is to help 200 million young people in Africa understand that they are my children if they believe in me through Jesus Christ and that they can change and transform this continent of Africa. Don't wait another day. Don't wait another day. There is a child going hungry because you're watching a video. And I'm saying this to you now. And I believe if you're watching this video, God wants you to hear this. Don't waste another day. Don't waste another hour watching something um, to entertain yourself without taking action. And doing something to improve yourself and to fulfill your potential and to reach out and start doing something. And so... Breaking your habits of entertainment slavery is really one of the things that you also need Christ at the center of your life. I had to pray, I had to ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ, and I had to accept that forgiveness, and I had to stand up again, pull in my tummy, put on a smile, <laughs> and walk out into the world and say, you know what, I'm leaving behind the pain, I'm leaving it behind, I'm leaving behind... Um, the emotional uh, baggage that I was carrying around with me, I'm leaving it behind. I'm going to start moving forward in courage, in self-discipline. This is what, uh, what the Bible teaches us in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Um, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, of, of courage, of love and of self-discipline. So take that spirit of love, take that spirit of courage, take that spirit of self-discipline and start communicating with God about the purpose he has for you in your life, specifically in relationship to improving your life and thereby helping to improve your family 
thereby helping to improve your community, thereby helping to improve your country, and thereby helping to improve the continent of Africa. The problems in Africa are not the government's problem. Yes, we have governments that are struggling. We do. But quite frankly, the governments are people that we have elected to put there. And, um, and we have democratic governments all across Africa. Yes, of course, people can be bought and there can be bribery. But quite frankly, if we allow it, we enable it. So we can't complain about our government for one day. We cannot complain about our government for one day if we don't do something to build this country. And we can do something. And we need to start pulling us ourselves up by our own socks and start doing something. There's no excuse for sitting at home and watching TV. No excuse. No excuse for sitting at home and looking at your screen and like scrolling and liking and scrolling and like. No, no, no. I have no problem with doing these social media as a fantastic tool to stay in touch with people that are far away. Spend a bit of time every day on it. Cool. No problem. It's like drinking coffee. One cup a day, two cups a day. No problem. But if you get more than that, you have to expect some challenges with your health. If you are going to have um, a beer every day, you know, a beer once a week, no problem. Glass of wine once a month, no problem. But if you're going to have that alcohol every day, remember what I was teaching in the in episode um, nine about, well, actually, I think episode eight about uh, um, addiction, slavery to, uh, uh, to addiction. That alcohol, it will catch your endorphin, you know, it will catch you. And it's going to stop your endorphins from being produced and it's going to make you experience um, withdrawal symptoms that make you only feel calm if you again have that sugar, have that caffeine, have that, that alcohol, have that nicotine. So, um, so understand that, that uh, even your device, I mean there's been quite a bit of research about this going on with social media that having a like and having a love actually gives you a little boost of dopamine which is one of the happiness hormones. And in that way, it starts getting you again addicted because you want that little boost because you want to feel loved. Now, what you have to do is grow spiritually. Start understanding that you do not need anybody's love except God's love. And God's love is there all the time. It's the one thing that stays the same all the time. You don't need to get a little boost of dopamine by gaming and gaming and feeling that you're getting more marked points and you're shooting more crooks or you know, you just want this dopamine high the whole time. Uh, no, you don't need that. You don't need that. If you understand that God is at the center of your life, you don't need that. Like I say, all of us are human. We will fall back into some bad behaviors like I did falling into a habit of entertainment slavery last year. And, um, but with the power of Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, we can ask the Holy Spirit to renew our mind again and to refocus us on why God actually made us here on earth. And so, um, in terms of entertainment slavery, I just want to say that one thing that's extremely important that I have learned is that when you have developed a habit, a certain habit, and uh, this is not an addiction necessarily, this is an, a habit. A habit is something that you do regularly all the time. You become into a habit, you don't even think about it. Habits are extremely helpful. Habits are so helpful because if you can adopt a good habit, and you can do it. You can go on autopilot and have that good habit. One of the good habits that my husband taught me was to drink water when he wakes up in the morning. And in fact, to drink water throughout the day every time he has to go to the bathroom. Now, most of us don't drink enough water. And so we become dehydrated and we become unfocused and we become, you know, we start craving food because we think, you know, our body sort of confuses thirst with wanting to eat something, having, a, you know, having some sugar. And so we start snacking on something. Well, in reality, we are just dehydrated and we are feeling tired because we are dehydrated. Let me teach you just one short little thing because I have a bit of time. Let me teach you something about, um, about why water is so important for our brain. This is one of the things that I teach in the Leadership and Entrepreneurship Program and I talk about the body. And that is that when you look at our cells, our brain cells, our, our uh, neurons, they're called neurons, they look almost like a hand, they almost look like the fingers of a hand, like this. And in the middle is the nucleus or the center of the cell, the neural cell, and then they've got little spikes coming out like fingers. Now these fingers go between each, you know, they, they sort of interconnect and they're known as synapses. Synapses. Let me write down that word. Synapse. And, uh, you know, multiple, more of the one, more than one is synapses. So now these synapses 
are, this is how our brain cells look like. And so what happens is that signals, that's information, jumps from one synapse, you know, goes from one synapsis to the, from one brain cell to the other through the space between these synapses, between these fingers. Now, the interesting thing is that God has made it in such a way that these signals swim. <laughs> they swim from one, they need water to swim through. If you don't have enough water, they crawl slowly. You must imagine like a fish crawling in the mud. It can't really move. And so that's what happens if you don't have enough water in your brain. If you don't have enough water, you're not hydrated enough. So drink water the whole time. Don't drink something that already, you know, don't drink um, something that has sugar in. Why? Because the body treats that fluid as, as food. So it first has to go through the, through the whole digestive system through a process of digestion because before the water is really absorbed. Um, so it delays the process of having uh, the necessary water for your brain. If you really want to be refreshed and if you want to be awake, drink pure, clean, ideally filtered water. Why filtered? Because most of our water systems are not very effective. So there are some minerals in there that, um, and and some you know some chemicals in there that are not necessarily good for our body. So if you can, if you can spend, you know, make a point as soon as you start making money to go to a shop that sells water filters, a jug with a water filter, and you simply put water into that, let it filter through, and have clear water. Or if you uh, are in the habit of buying water or you're forced to buy water, make sure you buy ozonated water so that you have some extra oxygen um, that helps your brain and your body to work better. So, um, so this is one thing that I just want you to know is that to stay awake, to stay alert, drink water so that you have fluid water between your brain cells so that you can concentrate. If you yawn, it's a sign that you are dehydrated. drink water. If you're studying for the exam, drink water. If you're lying in front of the TV, drink water. If you're lying in front of the TV, it means that your body, there's something wrong with your body because basically you just, you know, you have no energy level, low energy level. You need to understand the reasons for this and I won't talk about that now. I'm just saying habits, bad habits can be replaced by good habits. So if you had a bad habit of just going to crash in front of the TV in the past, change that with a good habit and that is do some do something in the house. Do something active in the house when you get home. Don't crash in front of the don't crash in front of the TV because you'll never get up from there, and you're going to waste your potential, and you're going to, uh, you know, stop your ability to create more prosperity for your family because you are just watching other people make, making money. So um, and the same thing with your cell phone. I've actually, I've actually really started enjoying not being so hooked onto my device all the time. I um, I know it irritates my friends sometimes because I don't respond immediately when they send me messages. Sometimes I just won't respond for a while. Why? Because I'm forcing myself to not look at my, my cell phone the whole time. Of course, when you are in business, it becomes difficult because you want to serve your client. But I do believe that it's important that you have one, you know, have one device for your work and that one you can look at during your working hours and you have one for your private life and that one you look at maybe once in the evening um, not before you go and sleep because that has other problems stops you from sleeping well and so learn about these things uh, I teach a lot of these things in the leadership and entrepreneurship program that I spoke about and um, in the next couple of episodes I will talk to you about how and when you can register for this course it really is aimed at youth aged 18 to 24 but it really is suitable for anyone that is unemployed and um, and that's willing to listen and to learn. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't like teaching people who just want to criticize everything and to actually have a you know prejudicial mindset because they already shoot down what you say anyway. Um, please don't register for my course if you are one of those people. But if you are interested in having key knowledge that somebody who has read a lot of books, who's got a lot of life experience. Has done a lot, of, has had the privilege of traveling a lot, can share with you in terms of practical advice, things that you can do to improve your life, because I have learned to improve my life in that way. Um, then the Leadership and Entrepreneurship Program is really uh, a fast track to success. That's all I, can, all I can say to you. It doesn't mean that you are not going to 
uh, go through phases because of life circumstances that will make you again periodically not be at the top of your game but it will help you to get out of it sooner than most other people it will help you to to understand that you actually need to take call on the power of the holy spirit to get you out of bed in the morning help you to put that smile on your face so that you have the energy that you need and that you have the willpower and the self-discipline uh, to not let yourself be caught into into entertainment slavery and so what I want you to do today is just take take a, take a notebook or if you have to take your device <laughs> take your device and start writing down the things that you do on a daily basis um, that actually waste your time what are you doing that's wasting your time manage it become a master of that habit by replacing it with a different habit so write down the habits that are wasting your time and then opposite to them think of a good habit that you can do for instance maybe you can sweep the yard maybe you can wash a window maybe you can fold some washing maybe you can take the rubbish out maybe you can dig in the garden take some weeds out maybe you can maybe you can walk around the block maybe you can go over to your neighbor and bother them while they're lying in front of the TV and explain to them that you have learned this from me and you were thinking that maybe he and you or she and you can um, can bond a little bit over a glass of water instead of watching some other people make money, you know, on TV. These soap operas that we are watching, they are very addictive because they make you feel good that your life is not as bad as that person's life. But really, you can break that. I've been there. I have also watched... Sieven Delan and I've watched Isidingo and I've watched oh a whole range of these soapies temporarily in the course of my life when I allowed myself to just be a little bit um, lazy, quite frankly. Just be a, you know, just just be a little bit rebellious maybe because things weren't going the way I wanted them to go and I was uh, maybe sulking. But I have learned that really <laughs> God will not let you stay in that space for very long if you if you have chosen to give your life to him and he will help you to get out of that and just really just get up from the chair get up they say sitting is the new smoking people are sitting so much that we are stopping our normal bodily functions from 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 working uh, people are get you know people are sitting and playing games for so much that they're constantly pushing their the adrenaline levels so in the end they get adrenal fatigue adrenal fatigue this is one of the things that i'm just mentioning please google this because it's really important information if you always feel tired you must understand that you may be suffering from adrenal fatigue and this is something that's very very common among gamers who are constantly playing video games and constantly pushing their, their um you know their their, adren their, their adrenals and um to you know the cortisone to get them to get them fired up because they've got to be sharp in order to be able to shoot and to get more points if you're going to do this to your body for hours and hours every night you are busy growing old before your time because quite frankly adrenaline makes you makes you acidic so you, it's it's not intended you know you're not intended to go hunting every night you our bodies we are not used to, it. you know, can't cope with this high level of adrenaline all the time. You are not going to be eating the right foods that's going to help your body to make it. And even if you ate the right foods, your body is going to struggle. And as a result, you're going to have adrenal fatigue. And the adrenals are little glands that are on top of your kidneys. Uh, read up about it. Google it. It's going to help you feel better. There are, there, there are a number of excellent, excellent... Um, resources on the internet uh, two of them i'm going to i'm actually going to mention three of them that i have found extremely helpful over the years to learn to learn how to how my brain works that's dr amen so you can look for dr amen.com dr amen great stuff about the brain then we have dr mercola dr mercola m-e-r-c-o-l-a Yes, these guys are all American, but I can tell you the Americans have done two, three things to, um, 
three things that uh, they are really giving gifting to the world. The one is they are excellent at educating, they're excellent at explaining things. And these guys, Dr. Amen and Dr. McCola, and the third one is Dr. Book. Dr. Book. Uh, very, very interesting, huge amount of free resources on the internet, lots of YouTube videos that explain different body processes in such a fantastic way. So Dr. Amen, Dr. Berg, and Dr. McCola, great guys to listen to too. Um, so if you want to watch something, watch them. Learn about your body, learn about your brain, learn about the body functions, and learn how to manage and master them, especially with regards to overcoming your, your habit of entertainment slavery. So don't let yourself be a slave. Do not become a slave to entertainment. The devil loves it. Why? Because you're never going to fulfill your potential. And so you're never going to help change your life. So you're never going to help serve others because you're just sitting there letting yourself be entertained. You're not serving anybody. God said we must love our neighbor. We can't just sit there and love our neighbor. Loving our neighbor means doing something for other people. So when you're sitting there in front of your TV, are you doing something for other people? No, you're not even doing something for yourself. You're even damaging yourself. So do not do this. Uh, rather, understand that God, entertainment is a wonderful gift that God is allowing into the world. He wants us to enjoy all the good things, including entertainment. But again, we must not be a slave to entertainment. And we must overcome, we must break our habits. Break our habits. And the best way of breaking your habit a bad habit is by replacing it with a good habit. Even if you only take, instead of watching, instead of watching, um, instead of watching a movie on your tablet, read an ebook. That already is a way of breaking the um, the the stupor of just watching movies and watching other people's visual expression and helping your imagination to again start kick-starting and the best book of course always to read is the bible so much wisdom in the bible but before you read the bible remember to always pray to god our father in heaven in the name of your son jesus christ please send the holy spirit to help me guide my reading and my thinking as i read this bible verse so that i may gain the food that you want me to have from this bite of your word today and um, and yes um, help and ask God again in the name of Jesus Christ to discern the spirits because you may also find a lot of teachings on the internet that are not biblical but refer to the Bible so these are things that I believe God will help you understand as you grow and mature spiritually in the beginning the most important thing is just to know love God Trust God, place Him, place Christ at the center, accept Jesus Christ into your life. And in doing so, you can hang on to that hand of your shepherd, Jesus Christ, and you can walk even through any habit of entertainment slavery. I'm not saying that anything is bad, lots of things are good. Um, of course, the devil uses entertainment i spoke about that in the form of um you know people use sex for entertainment it's not intended to be that it's you know sex is pornography is not supposed to be looked at at all it's a complete perversion of even entertainment and so don't let yourself go down those dark rabbit holes don't go there um and people talk about recreational drugs that's such a lie that's such a lie they are only they are only um, drugs that harm you. They, they make you feel temporarily good, but ultimately they harm you. So don't go down that entertainment route either. Um, so I hope this episode has been helpful to you um, in terms of releasing yourself from entertainment, slavery. Again, I can, I can recommend go on an entertainment fast, go cold turkey on entertainment and allow your eyes and your mind just and your you know and use your body in a different way by going for a walk instead of just sitting in front of the tv sticking out your belly having your beer next to you change those habits change those habits change those habits so that you can grow into a better version of you 
and always call on help from, um, from the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Call on God for help from the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ to overcome any form of entertainment slavery. Um, one last thing I want to say about, about habits and behaviors, and that is our brains are extremely intelligent. And if we are going to always do the same thing, we are going to create pathways from left to right brain, pathways that run across the same path all the time. Some of the most conservative people I have met are gamers. I love gamers, I find them very interesting. And I believe that God is also develop, you know, allowing gamers to develop certain skills because these can become extremely helpful in a productive environment. But if you are a gamer that's, that's been doing this for many years, don't be surprised if you hold extremely conservative views. Why? Because you've just got this one track in your mind. Shoot the crook, shoot the crook, be the first, shoot the thing. You know, it's very difficult for you to develop empathy. It's very difficult for you to start uh, thinking, seeing other people's perspective because you see everything in black and white, in, in bad and good. And um, the world is not like that. The world is full of a rainbow of colors and opinions and perspectives. And yes, um, God's word is the only clear path that we should, that we should direct our opinions around. But, um, but don't become judgmental. Each one of us is a sinner. We all are sinners. And there's no one sin greater than another. And so I'm just encouraging you that if you have fallen into an entertainment habit of gaming, reassess your life, reassess your life, reassess your relationships. And, um, and understand that that is not all there is in life. There's so much more. Having real relationships with real people is so much more enriching than having um, one track minded relationships with a bunch of gamers. Um, Life is about so much more than that. Much love. Hope you enjoyed this episode.